Good morning, motherfuckers, pimps, players, jive ass turkeys, you bad bitches, and my hoes in head wraps. If you're listening out there in Never Never Land or right now, this very second, hello world. Grab your coffee, your liquor, your weed, or your water. You're riding with Brooklyn X rated, a magnificent pimps daughter welcome welcome to brooklyn in the a.m let's Let's vibe vibe. hey good morning y'all good morning good morning i got so much stuff that i want to talk about today um you know i kind of feel like you know when we started this train your slut podcast i know a lot of people wanted to listen to dk and Trust me, Dom King, he's going to talk to y'all. Um, but I need to let my ladies know that I'm a woman who has been in a relationship and a marriage for a really long time. Some things that I've had the pleasure to sit back and observe, looking at the opposite sex and even just things that I deal with, dealing with couples. And, um, <laughs> I'm going to try to not be as derogatory. <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all know I got to be 100. I, I'm going to try to be respectful. But I want to talk about these men. I want to dedicate this to my fellas. This, uh, this episode to my fellas. And I know how I'm. Um, I know how y'all men be out there suppressing. I know how you try to find solace in the most simplest things like working out to hide your pain, you know, reading through your music, suppressing. Because women don't really want to look at you as human sometimes, right? They look at you like you're a machine. And uh, any type of emotions that you have, a vulnerability, you're instantly labeled weak. You're made to feel emasculated. You're made to just hold it all in. And that can be a very dangerous formula for a lot of shit. You know, these uh, women, we're going to talk about toxic women today. And uh, ladies, if you're not one of these toxic bitches, then this episode should not affect you. Because if you're not one of these that I speak of today, you should not be affected by what I say. But you have toxic women who are being raised by other toxic women. And it's a generational curse being passed down from bitter bitch to bitter bitch down to bitter bitch. And that's so much that's on my mind right now. These men are hurting. These men are hurting. You know, women always say they want a bad guy. And the good guy finishes last and that's very true the guys do finish last you know the good guys are the ones who want to be the family man they want to work pay the bills take care of their families and for most ungrateful bitches who don't recognize those qualities in that man You think he's a simp. You think because they want something solid and they don't want to run the streets. They don't want to be drug dealers. They don't want to be rappers. They just want to be hardworking men for their families. Y'all listen to these new age niggas who run podcasts singly and bitter. Tell you that you the new boss bitch of 2022 and you don't need a man. But then you wonder why you at home. Stress the fuck out. Struggling. Nobody to love. Nobody to love you back. 
got all these bricks on your shoulder because somewhere down the line you can you convince yourself that you didn't need a man by listening to other manless people or even a manless man who didn't even have a daddy to teach him even anything about what it meant to be a man. His daddy ran out on him and his mama, so he was raised by his bitter mama. And his bitter mama told him that men ain't shit, and he grew up to be exactly what she said. Ain't shit. He's more of a feminist, I guess. But um, the ones who are out there handling their business, regardless to what their hustle is, I'm not shitting on a man's hustle. You don't have to be a provider who work a nine to five. You can't be a hustler, right? Um, you're suppressing, and you're you're getting angry. It's a lot of angry men out there, angry at black women. Strangely, um, you got a bunch of other races that don't appreciate your ass either. But it seems like black women we get it the most and we get it the hardest. Unfortunate because I can't stand a bitch who uses a man's child as a weapon. That is the most selfish and egotistical and disrespectful thing you can possibly do. And you know you got the upper hand. You do. You know you got the upper hand because. Women so easily play victim. And society so easily believes that she is. You literally have men who are in domestic violence situations who don't believe in hitting a woman or raising their hand to a woman or disrespecting a woman. They just suppress. And uh, it leads to devastating results. You know, you got men that's out there thinking about killing themselves because they feel like it would be better off in a casket than to suffer every day living under a toxic woman's reign who has emasculated them over and over again. And they're hurting in silence. Hurting in silence. There are good men out there, ladies. Don't let these bitter bitches and these toxic niggas who grew up without daddies and bitter mamas and bitches who are constantly using their past relationship as a reason to disrespect and violate their new man because they can't seem to get out of their past. And they're using their children as weapons we always want men to be vulnerable with us we we want their vulnerability but some of you who receive their vulnerability use it as a weapon do you really want to know what their desires are what their thoughts are do you really want to know if they want to be with other women if they find you sexually attractive, but the wolf in them desires something else that has absolutely nothing to do with love, but just more of an instinct of a natural man's makeup. To domesticate a man is a gift because we all know men aren't truly meant to be domesticated. They do that shit out of love. A man should be out there, as they say, in coming to America. Sowing his royal oats. So when a man decides to settle down and be domesticated to a woman, and a woman does not appreciate that gift, and then you want to dictate the relationship and set rules of what he can and what he can't do, and be the person that wears the pants in the family. I hold that shit. I hold a woman accountable for her choices of what kind of man she selects for him, for herself. At this point, I, I don't even hold the man accountable. If you 
I had a man, and he didn't have a job, and he was a bum, and he was sleeping on the couch. And then uh, he moves in with you, and he does the same things, and it's really not that man's fault. He showed you who he was. You, you hold yourself accountable. I just wish men didn't have to suffer. I wish, you know, there was a lot of men who were hurting on Father's Day who didn't get to spend time with their child who's been made a villain by toxic women who has been accused of some horrible things beating their woman trying to molest their children and that seems to be a narrative that seems to be very popular what I notice in you know the black family When a man don't want to be with a woman anymore, the first thing she does is she uses his child as a weapon. I honestly believe that if you have children and you're a woman and you have sons, if he's a good man, you should allow that man to raise his sons. It's the right thing to do. Only a man can teach a little boy how to be a man. And if you're a woman and you have a little girl, then you should raise that little girl. Or if y'all can mutually get along, then you should raise that child together, regardless of the sex or gender of that child. But when you are just bitter and you use that child as a weapon. You're the lowest of the fucking lowest scum there is. And I wish you nothing but misery and pain throughout your existence of life because that's all you're doing to that child. And then you listen to more bitter people. You listen to your bitter mama. Exactly the same shit to you. That's why your daddy was never around. Now you grown thinking your daddy was a dead beat. But meanwhile, he just wanted to stay the fuck away from your sick, toxic ass mama. But the mamas never get held accountable to the fuck shit. Just the man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry that you poured yourself and all your love into a woman that didn't deserve you, who... Rather emasculate you, rather shame you, rather make you feel like you ain't enough. I'm sorry that you've taken your natural instinct of being a wolf and chose love over... Hunting an ungrateful bitch I'm sorry that you have to carry the, carry the crosses of society and being made to look at as a predator at all times regardless if you got a degree or degrees or a job because the narrative always goes toward the woman and how good are we at playing victim I'm so sorry I'm so sorry that you're forced to suppress your emotions and your pain and you gotta cry in silence and that you're broken inside. I'm sorry that you're silenced and no one listens to you and your words fall on deaf ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you're being emotionally, mentally, spiritually abused. I'm so sorry. I don't know what it's like to be a man. It has to be extremely hard to be you. It seems like there's so many bricks on your shoulder, day in and day out. You're forced to be strong. A woman should be your safe place. A woman should be your peace. A woman should be a woman and your nurturer. But these new modern day bitches, they don't want to be that. They want to be your... They want to compete. In the name of a bad. That's all these bitches give a fuck about in 2022. They don't give a fuck about real family values. And they tell you 
that that was old school. We ain't like our grandma and our grandpas, and we're not going to sit here and stay together because it's the right thing to do. That's not what the fuck I'm saying. I'm saying there's really only one family unit. I don't give a fuck what your narrative is. I will always represent the man, woman, and child. The real holy trinity. Because without a man and a woman... There would be no fucking humans, would there? And even if you're a woman and a woman and you decide to go out there and adopt a child, you still needed a man for that. You still needed semen to make that child. So at the end of the day, a man is most important, regardless what team you're on. The Holy Trinity is man, woman, and child. And when you have that, and you disrespect it, and take it for granted in such a foul way, You're fucking scum of the earth. And I'm talking about real love and family. Because you want to listen to outside influences. Like your bitter mama. Your bitter fat aunties. Your manless homegirls. Who don't even know anything about what it is to be in a relationship. Because they don't know about the Holy Trinity. And I love women. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I I, I fucked the shit out of a woman. The best of my ability. I, I mean, we can scissor. I can't fuck a woman. I mean, she can she can eat some coochie and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I know where the place is. I know where I fucking belong. I know what's important. I know what makes other humans. And there's so many women out there who deserve a good man. So much. And you have one or had one and you misuse them. And you abuse them. And then you look around and you say, I just need a good man. And you had one sitting in front of you the whole fucking time. But you were ungrateful. You complained. You didn't see him. You didn't acknowledge him. You didn't respect him. I don't give a fuck how long you've been together. If you don't respect each other, you don't love each other. And if it's all about the finances, then leave. And go snuggle your purse. Or let that man have a side check. Who will do everything you refuse to do. Bring him peace. Love. Comfort. Solace. Oh, just do all the things you don't want to do. I advocate side chicks. I think they're very necessary. You know, they call them side chicks now, but I think the proper word would be concubine because it's so much cleaner. I'm, I'm so tired. Of y'all not appreciating what you have. And then you blame him when he's had enough and he wants to leave and he wants to go find better. I'll tell you a quick story. I had a friend. And I gave her every ounce of my love that I could give to try to tell her that I saw her destroying her own marriage from the inside out. He worked. He did everything right. She bitched about him working too much. He ain't never home. But this bitch never wanted to work. All she had to do was stay home and make sure that man had a nice meal when he came through the door. And she complained about that too. Because maybe he did an extra shift to take care of her and her family. So when this man came home, there was no food. He had to cook for himself. When he wanted to be intimate? There was no sex. Because she said he was gone too much. When he said, go get a job? She complained. And she said it was his job. So he got an extra shift. You got promoted? She complained about that too. 
And I saw this marriage unfolding right before my eyes. And guess what I did? I didn't say a fucking thing. I had no words of inspiration or any type of narrative to give her any validity to her fuck shit. I ached for this man. I was sad for this man. This abused man. With an ungrateful bitch. And then guess what? He started cheating on her. She wondered why. And slowly, he started kind of falling in love with this new chick. And she became everything that my friend was. And he left her. And I was never happier for him. Because men are worthy, too. It ain't always just about you, ladies. Men deserve happiness and love. And appreciation, too. For you women who use sex as a weapon, oh, that is the quickest way to lose your man. How conceited are you that you think the most valuable thing in your relationship is pussy, which is the most easiest shit to get but somewhere you thought not fucking him would teach him a lesson you silly rabbit intimacy is a main ingredient of any relationship and to deny that intimacy to your lover because you somehow value your vagina over his requirement and peace and relaxation and safe place is beyond me when did this become a thing and if you want to use sex as a weapon then just get out of the marriage and allow him to fuck somebody else and have a side chick A.K.A. Concubine. Imagine if a man used dick as a weapon. You'd be heartbroken. You'd be devastated. Your self-esteem would drop to an ultimate low. You'd cry yourself to sleep and wonder why you weren't good enough. But somehow, it's okay for women to do this. And don't plan to do something with your man just to let him down and get him all excited. And then suck the life out of him. That's gonna get you cheated on too. You know, planning sex days. What's good for you, babe? Thursday? Three o'clock? How about Friday? That's the quickest way to kill any type of intimacy. You don't want to share your body with your man. He ain't your man. He's your hostage. He's your toy. He's not your lover. He's not your spouse. He's not your provider. He's not your dom. He's your plaything. And you're disrespectful. I'm sorry, man. But you gotta deal with this shit from trifling bitches. I'm so sorry that you're silenced and you're holding your pain in. You're not allowed to cry because you looked at as weak once again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not good enough. This is Brooklyn X Rated. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you for vibing with me. And I'm out.